Does your because I found some valuable gem of gem satoshis in my Bitcoin wallet that I was uh, uh, unaware of, and I want to share with you guys because you might be holding the same exact thing. And we're going to be covering where the ordinals market is heading to and why you need to be up to date with this because you want to be ahead of the crowd. All that coming up in this live stream. Francis Dune uncensored. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Does your Bitcoin wallet hold more valuable satoshis than you actually think? Does the price, whatever the, the, the how, whatever how much ever satoshis you hold in your Bitcoin wallet, whether that's 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.0005, whatever the heck it is, you actually might be holding far more valuable satoshis than what that price indicates. And I'm going to be showing you guys exactly what I mean in this live stream. Now, look. If you guys been following the channel for some time now, you guys know we've been pretty bullish on the whole Bitcoin ordinal space. You guys want to miss out on this information. Do like, subscribe, hit the bell notification button. We're going to get right into it. It's a very exciting day today. Can't wait to show you guys what I have found in my wallet. We're talking about rare sats. We're talking about Bitcoin historical events. We're talking about cultural events, okay, that actually has a timestamp attached to it, which brings it historical value. I'm going to explain all of that for you guys. You know, you know, like right now, the ordinal space is a big craze and people are going berserk for it. You know, BRC20 tokens we had, you know, obviously the ordinals um, coming about, uh, the dot .sats domains, all of these things. There's a new emerging market that's coming before your very eyes. I just remember who you heard it from, uh, from it first. It's myself. I'm going to show you guys this. It's really, 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 really exciting times right now, at least for me. And I'm sure after this live stream, you guys will um, see why I'm excited now. Let's get right to my to my screen over here, and I will come into the live chat and say what's up. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we are on ordswap.io, and we are looking at these ordinals by in terms of, you know, their inscription number, the earliest. As you see, inscription number 31 over here, we got, um, you know, uh, Taproot Wizards at number 70, number 112, 116, 118, 120, and the list goes on. Now, why is this important? It's important because, you know, you know, for the most part, the lower the inscription number, right? What does that mean? Well, that means the more valuable the damn ordinal, okay? And it's not my opinion, as you can see right here. And I got to repeat this once again. The lower the inscription number, more times out of 10, it's more valuable, okay? And this is not my opinion. This is what the market is telling us. But we have a problem, okay? And you know what that problem is for the people who are watching this in the live chat or maybe you're watching the replay? The problem is... When you go to ordinals.com, which is the official website, or I should say um, Explorer for Ordinals, you could track each and every single one from inscription zero all the way past to a million. What we're seeing here is exactly that. We're seeing, let's click on this guy here for a second. We're seeing 1,183,658. This guy who got this inscription number at that um, you know mark, over 1 million mark, is never going to see his collection sell for this much unless he has a technology behind that it's backed by a software that could do something or it actually has some really cool damn utility that's making people money or bringing value to that actual um um collection which probably it isn't okay so let's carry back over here so my point is when you see an ordinal that's in the 1 million mark like this guy right and let's just go back it might be a little bit slow right and then you see another collection let you see another collection. Let's just see it like right here. That's also, right? Let me click it. Come on, man. Don't freeze up on me now. Okay. Ordinals.com is acting up. But, right? And then you see another collection that's in the 1 millionth mark over this that doesn't have the early inscription number, like a sub 50K, a sub 10K, a sub 100K, but all they have is a million. What really differentiates this dude from the last guy over a million? If they, all they have is art, all they have is this picture, all they have is this picture, you know what's going to happen? We're going to see the same mistake we saw the Ethereum NFT industry, you know, um, unfortunately face, which was what? Well, they were diluted with a bunch of shit, a bunch of shit that has no utility. And we are in crypto, which is what? Crypto is a technological, you know, economic, social space. Right, and if all you have is just something that has no real backing behind it, no utility other than community driven, it can only take you so far. Okay, it can only take so far. So, my point is, what is going to be the differentiator for them? They best become a utility, they best become with some technology. If not, they are irrelevant. Right, so when you got a project like this guy and this guy coming at it, and they got nothing to offer other than the art aspect. That's a problem for their longevity and their success. And, you know, I feel sorry for their community members, to be honest. Now, when you see that how, you know, 
there's not much that could differentiate a project, then what is next? Well, we need to see what is it backed by other than technology, uh, what is it backed by other than, um, you know, um, 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 you know, utility, right? We're looking at now the actual Satoshi, because why? An ordinal is a Satoshi, and a Satoshi has a serial number, and it has a timestamp, okay? Now it brings us to the historical side of things. Why? Well, Bitcoin is the oldest cryptocurrency on the market right now. Okay, so it has the oldest history or cultural events that took place. And, you know, when we come over here now and we just, you know, go to our friend at Google.com and we ask Google, you know, things like historical and cultural artifacts value. And the reason why I bring this up, ladies and gentlemen, is because you guys, for the most part, are used to one type of collectible, which is art. And what's the rarity of the art? Oh, I know what I'm talking about, art. That's just one of many assets that makes it collectible, okay? And this is why I got to bring up these definitions. What is the definition of a collectible? It's not just art. Maybe that art is something really cool that, you know, you could resonate with. Like, I don't know, an ape that's colorful and, you know, that other doodle thing that's throwing up ice cream. I don't know. Whatever it is. But my point is this. There's other attributes to um, that, that um, you know, NFT connoisseurs or collectibles, historians, if you will, memorabilia, if you will, that they value. And one of those things are right here, cultural artifacts. Okay? Cultural artifacts, whether ancient or current, have significance because they offer an insight into technological processes economic development and social structure please let me please allow me to repeat that for you okay so cultural artifacts whether ancient or current have a significance because listen very carefully to the highlighted text they offer an insight into technological processes economic development and social structure right there and then okay um um a technological processes economic development and social structure just explained bitcoin why? Because it's technology, right? Software is technology, number one. Number two, it's economics we're dealing with. We're talking about limited supplies. We're talking about how it's distributed. We're talking about miners. We're talking about all these economics behind it, token economics, what have you, right? There you go. And it's also social. I got to admit, like, most of the people that I met right now that I talk to who are closest to me, I met through Bitcoin or cryptocurrency or Telegram or, you know, online through the crypto community I met them. So it is social. So right there and then, this describes exactly what Bitcoin is. Technologically, economics-wise, and also um, cultural or social. Okay, social. So that right there stands out. This is where we're getting to the artifacts. What is an artifact? Archaeology. We're talking about Bitcoin archaeology and artifacts here. True Bitcoin archaeology and artifacts. And why is this different? Let me drink this for it gets so cold. Why is this different to Ethereum NFTs? And I'm not talking about like, you know, there's some NFTs out there like business license NFT, Metapolitans. That is valuable. It's not art. It's use case. It's businesses running behind that. Okay. You know, if that's what you're doing, cool. But we're talking about Ethereum art NFTs. Now, why is this different? Well, number one, this is a Satoshi. This is not a newly minted token. You understand what I'm saying? When I go and I have an art, um, Ethereum art NFT, right? I have to mint new tokens, okay? It has no history behind that, no culture behind that, okay? Opposed to an ordinal that I'm gonna about to show you guys, these ordinals, right? It's a Satoshi, and Satoshis were mined in 2009 of January, February, so on and so forth. There's a lot of shit that took place. Like, we all know the Bitcoin pizza did. We all know the HODL, when that guy misspelled HODL. You all say HODL in Telegram, come on now, right? We're talking about these things. Um, you know, we could go on. Bitcoin's anniversary. We're going to get to all of these things, right? And if you could find that Satoshi and inscribe it, you excavate like my team and myself have been doing. We've been excavating through millions of Satoshis and finding some gems. And, you know, I'm very, you know, relieved to share with you what I have found. And, you know, speaking of another example right here of what historical value mean, collectible. You think this has anything right here to do with art? These rare coins, and this is rare, and by the way, this is rare physical coins. What I'm about to show you is the rare freaking digital coins we call Bitcoins, if you know what I'm saying. So let's carry on. So, small coins, big value. The world's 11 most valuable coins. Again, why do I bring this up? Because a lot of people in this space are obsessed or consumed or don't know anything better other than art. It's art. The same people who've never owned a piece of art in their life before NFTs, 
right? Who've never even drew a piece of art and sold it in their life before NFTs, okay? Come on, guys, let's admit. NFT art was a good way for a lot of people who own those projects to make money off your asses, okay? Now, let's talk about this. So, the most valuable stamps aren't the only minuscule objects worth a lot of money. Someday, perhaps, that might change. Look at this. The change, some, uh, sorry, someday, perhaps, the change in your pocket could be too. Or in other words, someday, perhaps, the Satoshi dust in your wallet could be too. If you know what I'm saying. Let's go down. So, these are the top most valuable coins to look out for. Okay? Why? Because they hold culture. They hold historical value not rarity of the art and how much how much eyes it has or cigars in its mouth or sunglasses is on them with the background all that dumb shit is for little kids okay this is what real men actually invest in okay people who are millionaires as you can see millions of dollars here but let's carry on so saint gordon's double eagle 20 million two hundred and twelve thousand dollars flowing here a silver dollar 13 million goes on and on. So let's actually, um, where is it? Here. Right, you guys, yeah, I'm sharing the screen. Okay, so those seeking rare coins, aka rare Satoshis, if you know what I'm saying, rare, rare sats, um, are familiar with St. Goggins Double Eagle. You might be surprised to learn that these were created from 1907 to 1933. Okay, now let's just stop right there. What gives this value right off the bat? It's ancient history gives anything, most things value. Ancient history. If I was to find Christopher Columbus's pouch that he kept his gold coins in, that's going to be worth uh, money. Why? Because that's an artifact from history in monumental times when this guy discovered the new world. So that's value. Okay, what brings this value? Well, as you can see right here, they talk about old dates, 1907, 1933. And the reason why I bring this up is because why this is different to NFT art is because NFT art, if I want to make a project today, no, it's 2023 of April. There's no history behind it. So number one, right, this is a this is a very important trait on what makes this valuable. Then you say, okay, well, how does that coincide with Bitcoin? Well, as I just told you, or Bitcoin ordinals, what I just told you, Bitcoin is the oldest cryptocurrency. There's a lot of monumental events that happen from 2009 to 2023. No other chain can ever do that. And even if they can, they're not taking a piece of Ethereum out when Ethereum came out, came out in 2015. They're minting a new token. It's an, it was it a freaking ERC721, whatever the heck it is. So it has no history behind it, okay? See what I'm saying? All right, but the gold recall of 1933 forced many people to turn these coins for paper money. So what happened now was they um back in the 1933, you had to convert your gold into uh, into paper currency fiat. Oh my god! Thank God I wasn't alive then, bro. If I had if I was forced to do that shit, oh my god, I will cause riots. But quite a few are still in existence. But 1933 is perhaps the most sought after example in this group for valuable coins to look out for. Selling at, you know, almost 19, tipping um, the 19 million mark over there in 2021, and then the 20 million mark in 2023, so on and so forth. And we could go on to another example of a rare coin down here. So in 1794, flowering hair silver dollar, 13 million. And it has its own reasons of why it's valuable. But the common denominator really comes down to is history. It's culture, and um, yes, obviously, uh, rarity is part of that too, okay? But what stands out for these coins, which is not just limited to physical coins, but also digital coins like Bitcoin especially, is the historical um, artifact and, and, and cultural events that took place there that is time-stamped and that you could like now inscribe with the invention of my mother effing tool that is badass, um, any Satoshi that you please, which is not to be mistaken with, you know, inscribing random Satoshis like, you know, what these public uh, service inscription services offer, right? Like a Gamma.io, which I love, like a Unisat.io, which I love, you know, at the moment right now, you can only inscribe random Satoshis to make random art, but there's nothing random about what I'm about to show you here. It all has meaning. It all has relevance. And let's get to that now. And yeah, I just wanted to show you all of this stuff. It's just randomness. Like this guy right here, Genuine Undead. This guy watched a fucking horror movie and wanted to put the dude in the horror movie as an NFT collection. Sorry, I don't mean to beat you down, but it is what it is. Let's go on, guys. Speaking of cultural events that are big in Bitcoin's history, people, for those of you in the live chat right now, wouldn't you all agree, or maybe you're watching the replay, wouldn't, wouldn't you all agree that Bitcoin having 
is a true massive cultural event in Bitcoin's history that only took place three times so far. 20, what was it? I think it was 2012, 2016, and 2020. And we got one coming up next freaking year, which should spike the next bull run. We all know Bitcoin having is a monumental cultural event that took place in Bitcoin. This is what I'm getting to. So, a Bitcoin halving event occurs when the reward for mining Bitcoin transactions is cut in half, having to reduce the rate at which new coins are created and thus lower the available amounts newly supplied. This is what I'm getting to. Bitcoin last halved on May 11th, 2020. You see what I'm saying? Okay? May 11th, 2020. Now, look at this right here. This is from... Or Remember, guys... This is ordinals.com. This is not my data. If you want to search a Satoshi and you got the sat serial number like this, it's going to populate this information for you and tell you what it is. So according to them, there's another way. This is a common sat. And we're going to get into the uncommons and the rares in, in a couple other slides, which is like, I think this one here. But right now, this right here, this Satoshi that I found in my wallet actually was created during not the Bitcoin having month, not the Bitcoin halving week, but the Bitcoin halving date. Look right here, timestamp. This is when it was mined. 2020, May 11th. Okay, let's go back here. This is May 11th, 2020. I literally now, if I was to make that into a collection of Bitcoin halving day, that I got the Satoshi that was born on the date when these Satoshis are halved in the format of an ordinal Satoshi that's on that date of that Satoshi being mined, it's all historical, it's all cultural, and it's actually relevant to that Satoshi, making it a true what? A true Bitcoin artifact. <laughs> and I just showed you the definitions of what an artifact is in, in, in the first two minutes of this presentation, right? I mean, w w wouldn't you agree that that's a cultural event right here, Bitcoin having? Wouldn't you agree if I actually had the ability to inscribe this not random sat, but in fact, relevant sat, make a cool ass Bitcoin having date from 2020, you know, like a picture onto it. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be worth it? Isn't that real memorabilia that blows out most of these things in the water that has true collectible desire for connoisseurs? <laughs> come on, come on. Look, if you guys were buying fucking monkeys, dogs, and frogs, for hundreds of thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars, millions in some people's cases, and you don't see the value in this, something's wrong with you. But let's get to it. Okay? Let's go on to the next one right here. This is another Bitcoin having date, okay? That I also have. So now maybe I can make a collection and make it into a Bitcoin having collection, right? This is another Satoshi. No, I'm uh, sorry. This is July 9th, 2016. This is when the Satoshi was mined that I found and I scanned with my tool in my wallet. Let's um, go on to the next slide here. For those who don't know, um, yeah, July 9th, 2016, okay, right here. This is the other Bitcoin having date. I have this very Satoshi that I could combine or stack with this Satoshi on the, um, the, the next Bitcoin having date of 2020. Okay, guys, I'll make that into a collection. This is not me making up shit from the top of my head that I think is going to be cool. This is me researching what is artifacts, why is museum, um, you know, uh, artifacts valuable, why is historical artifacts valuable, why are cultural events valuable, and I'm combining it with these sats that I am excavating, taking me hours and hours and hours to find, first of all, and if you're lucky enough to find it, let's represent it and match that timeline with a picture, right? A representation of that event that took place. That is what you call a fucking masterpiece, bro. Okay? The examples do carry on, so let's let's move on. We found some really other cool ones too. Again, the reason why I bring this up is because we have realized that inscription, low inscription numbers is where the value is at. I don't know about y'all, but what I was looking for is I was looking for I got an ordinal that's under a thousand, it's like 900 something. I got an ordinal under 10K. I got an ordinal under 20, 30, 40, 50, and like some 70s. I don't mess with nothing over 100K, right? So if we, we know that how we're never going to see another inscription come up and be made under 100K, it's over a million, then what's left? Where's the value at? This is where the value's at. Right? Okay. 
Let's move on to something else, which is pretty cool, too. Uh, so what do we got here? Okay, yeah. So this is the third halving date, as you can see, right? 2012, or the first one, however you look at it. The first halving date, 2012, 11th of the 27th. Oh, sorry. This is what I have here. Sorry, sorry, my bad. That The, the earliest halving date in 2012 was on the 28th of November. This is what I have, though. I just missed it by one day. So had I had this on the 28th, now I had all Satoshis that were mined on all three halving dates. I would have made a beautiful fucking collection. A beautiful collection of real memorabilia. Bro, come on, guys. Every time the having day comes, man. Like, I don't care if they, I don't care who you are. If you're in this space and you don't appreciate the having day that that splices Bitcoin every time in, in terms of rewards, that gives us that bull run every freaking time for us to make generational gains that if I was to work for fucking 10 years straight, I wouldn't even get that kind of money. But Bitcoin having date, when that comes and the markets pop and it makes me that kind of money in like a span of one year, opposed to 10 lifetimes, you don't appreciate that shit, bro? You tell me you wouldn't buy that? I would fucking buy that. <laughs> okay? I'm not, e I'm not even this NFT geek. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Anyhow, I mean, what I'm trying to say is even a guy who's not really into this NFT art wouldn't see his value into something like this. Okay? Is what I'm trying to say. Um, okay, so let's move on here now. There's another one that we found, ladies and gentlemen. Do you know, one of the most famous quotes ever from Satoshi Nakamoto is what? His last quote. It pretty much just starts and ends right here. There's more work to do. That's it. Look, Satoshi Nakamoto stopped communicating with the cryptocurrency industry on um, 11 years ago, and he left the final message. There's more work to do. And this is the, uh, the original message, right? December 12th, 2010, okay? So that's the 12th month, um, 2010, on the 12th. So the 12th month, which is December, the 12th day, which is the 12th, and 2010, right? What do I got right here? 2010, 12, 12, okay? I have Satoshi's Nakamoto's Satoshi, that was mined on the date that Satoshi, okay, sorry, did here, shit, 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 right, on the date that Satoshi left his last message on Bitcoin Talk, bro, I can make a collection, there's a collection right now that I bought, and I showed you guys this already, and it's, it's right here in my higher wallet, but um, I don't have this logged in, right, in my higher wallet, it's a, it's a quote from Satoshi, that was, a, I think it's an ordinal of 7,000, under 10K, and I just bought it anyways. But the act, imagine if that Satoshi that made that ordinal was actually on the date of the quote. Bro, the, 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 the freaking value of that already skyrocketed. So now, not only do I have a quote from Satoshi, I got arguably the most um, memorable or valuable quote of him, which was the last fucking one. For all you collector nerds out there, this is like, this is what you jerk off to. You're hoping you will find this. Oh, oh no, oh no, you just want random shit that people did mushroom trips on and had ideas to make fucking projects on? God, no wonder you guys are broke. Holy shit. If that's what you think collectibles are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I let that, it, it don't get more relevant than that. Let's check this out again. December 12th, okay, okay, 2010. Satoshi said his last ever message on Bitcoin Talk. They, there's more work to be, um, there's more work to do. Okay, right? And then now, when we come on over here, I got, oh shit, sorry. When we come on over here, I got that damn Satoshi here that I can now inscribe into a picture and instead of just having a random motherfucking picture of Satoshi on a random damn fucking um, um, ordinals timestamp, I got the actual one! Holy crap. I, I don't know. Am I, am I just the only one tripping here? <laughs> Do you guys catch the value? Let me know in the live chat because I'm coming to it real soon. But I want to share one more with y'all. You know? Um, hold on, hold on. I, actually, you know what? I got to find it. Um, Thomas. Uh, yeah, it might be hard for you to get. It's called, I forget, the quotes of Satoshi or something like that. Let me see if I can find it. The quote of SAT so ordinals. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to find it on the fly. Um, Satoshi quote ordinal, something like that. Hold on, guys. Satoshi quote ordinals. Might come up here. Give me one second. They do have a Twitter, um, Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, sorry, guys. You guys could chit chat in the meantime. I'm just actually logging into my Hyro. Hopefully, I'm in the oh, man.
That doesn't work. We're moving on. Okay, no, that worked. I want to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. But before I do that, let me say hello to everybody in the live chat. What's up, guys? Are you holding valuable Satoshi that you are unaware of? Don't worry. No need to fear. Your boy, Franny, is here. Okay, I'm here to save the day once again. About to drop some more, you know, knowledge and enlighten y'all. Are you guys understanding what I'm presenting here, first of all? Do you understand the value here? Do you understand why it doesn't really make much sense unless it's crazy utility or they actually build technology that backs their ordinal project? Why it makes no sense to go in to buy something that's over a million at this point? If it's all about the low inscription numbers for the historical aspect of it, and now, well, you know, you can never get another low one unless you buy it. The right? ones that's been inscribed is going to be over a million. Then what's left then? And what's left? It's where is that actual Satoshi that was inscribed? That's a real gem, right? Is that, does, that, does that fall on a monumental cultural date? And could you now extract it and inscribe it? That's what we're talking about here, okay? Let me know if you guys feel that, uh, that value there. But let me say what's up to the people in the live chat. We got Big Kim says, very good. Thomas, uh, sorry, let me go up. So Flip C is here. Thank you, Flip, for joining. Uh, we got uh, XZ Killer says, yo, yo, what's up, uh, Roy? Um, H says, let's go, let's go. Devis is in the chat um, answering some questions, I believe. We got APV, we got H, we got, what we got here? We got Busy Match Club. We got people here. Thank you so much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, let me kind of go back here now, okay? So this is what I am referring to. Yeah, my collectibles are going to take forever to launch. Thomas, do you have that collection I'm talking to, uh, talking about that I actually purchased? Um, hold on, guys. I want to bring it up. If it's not in there, be here. maybe, 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 maybe. I don't know. But anyways, there's a really cool collection out there, and they're taking quotes of Satoshi and putting the quote on the ordinal and selling it. It's sub 10k. I thought it was pretty cool. I like that. It, it holds a close place in my heart. Um, have all the respect for Satoshi and what he said and everything he said is combating the fucker that's happening today in the traditional world and we got Bitcoin to resort to. So I thought it was really cool and, you know, it, it had true sentimental value to me to go and buy that um, ordinal. Now, if that ordinal actually could have, you know, been inscribed on that same date of that Satoshi of when the quote was made, to me, it makes it hell of a more valuable. And another point I want to bring up, there's a very popular guy on Twitter called Trevor.BTC. Um, all the respect in the world to Trevor, and uh, there's another guy, Leonidas. I think they, they do spaces together. I highly recommend you guys check out their shows. Um, two knowledgeable guys in this field. But Trevor.BTC is the owner of the first ever Bitcoin magazine ordinal, okay? Um, I, I can bring that up here. Thomas, if you want to drop that in the chat, the Twitter um, thread he made. But the reason why I bring that up is because, you know, imagine if the Bitcoin or ordinal magazine which was issued, the first issue in, I believe it was 2012 of May, something like that. We actually have that ordinal. But when I checked the Bitcoin magazine and I went to the SAT number and I see the date of the, the Satoshi, it's not even that one. Imagine if I was Trevor.BTC on Twitter, go check him out. You know, he's bullish on ordinals. If I was him, and I'm very proud of in this, you know, Bitcoin first ever magazine ordinal, whatever, you know, they put the picture of the cover page on it. Had Bitcoin Magazine actually get the Satoshi from that day and I put it in there, to me, that's three times more valuable. You know, and means so much more to me as a collector. But guess what? I actually have that Satoshi. You know, we don't have the date, but guess what? Bitcoin Magazine don't issue it by date. It's by month. So we have that month. I believe it was 2012 of May or March 28th. Okay? So again, had them, Bitcoin Magazine, inscribe their ordinal collection, the first ever Bitcoin Magazine, right, connect collection, the cover page is their art, pretty much. With the actual Satoshi from that date? Bro, that, that, that's a gem of a gem, bro. Okay. So what else do we got here? Okay, now. <laughs> Show me the money. This, you don't want to talk about gem of gems? We're about to talk about a gem of gem. All right. You guys don't go nowhere, bro. Check this out. You're just in time, okay? For the real freaking um, meat and potatoes. Guys. We have found, okay, and there's a way to do this at scale. Whenever it lights up greed, and mind you, this is not me, okay? This is not me here. This is ordinals.com, the, the official Bitcoin ordinal explorer. This is based off of their standards, not mine. I ain't making this shit up. You know what I do? What I do is I check out, as I tell you guys, you need to know the game that you're playing in order to remain in front of the line and in order to beat the crowd, in order to maximize your profits. If you don't know the game that you're playing and not studying the markets, then you're going to be lost. 
You're going to be lost. You're going to think you're doing the right thing, and it turns out not to be the right thing. So what am I getting to? I was scouring this website. They got the handbook and, you know, the market on Twitter and whatever, what people are doing and saying, and I want to really study this industry to understand what the game that I'm playing, okay? And right here, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about an uncommon sat, which is extremely rare to find. And I'll tell you why this is rare. And again, you're like, well, you know, Francis, this this sat was mined on um, this year of January 11th. I thought you're going with memorabilia and historical data. That is true. To me, that's where I'm going after. But there's another sort of asset classes within the Satoshis that have mathematical difficulties and that makes the, um, each Satoshi also mathematically hard or rare. And here's what I mean. So what is an uncommon sat? What, what defines an uncommon sat, guys? Please pay attention, okay? So when we come to ordinals.com forward slash overview and we scroll down, it gives us right here the definitions of such things, okay? So number one, a common Satoshi, right? which is the most common one. Everyone has a common Satoshi, as long as you got some sats. Um, any sat that is not the first sat of its block, which is essentially which is essentially 99 point fucking 999%, literally. And <laughs> check this out. So an uncommon sat, okay? The first Satoshi of each block. Now, what does that mean? So we're at mempool space right here, and this is pretty much Bitcoin um, Explorer, and it tells us all the blocks. So this is a block here that's about to mine in about 10 minutes or so. This is a block that already was mined. Now, in this block, there's 3,588 transactions. It doesn't tell us the number of Satoshis. I believe this is the um, block number. But if you have a Satoshi that is literally the first Satoshi of this block, of this block, of this block, of this block, then you just found yourself an uncommon sat, okay? And I'm gonna break that down much further for you to really grasp and understand this perspective, okay? Now, this is how rare that is. There is approximately, I believe it's um, 144 blocks per day, which makes it now, if it's the first sat, not the first set of sats, but the first sat, there's 100 million Satoshis in one Bitcoin, to give you perspective. So out of... All those millions of Satoshis in that block, you need the first sat. Not first two, three, four, five, ten. The first individual one to actually be called uncommon, okay? So there's about, let's call it um, 100 and, uh, sorry, 114 a day, so to speak, right? Which gives us this metric right here. Uh, Thomas, is that correct? Is it 114 or is it 144? I think it's 144. So every 10 minutes, there's a new block, which means every 10 minutes, um, there's a new, um, you know, uncommon sat, okay? So let's go down right here. This is going to really give you perspective. So a common Satoshi is out there, 2.1 quad trillion, okay? Uncommon, about 7 million total supply, not circulating, okay? Let's get, let's, let's, let's get down to it right here. This is actually going to really target it even better for you to understand. So in the current circling supply right now, there's 1.9 quadrillion common sats. Now, this is what we're talking about. Uncommon sats is 745,855 circulating right now. And I own one of them that was sitting in my wallet, as I just showed you guys here. Okay, now, now to find the true rarity of that, what do we do? We're going to find the percent. So if this is the amount of common sats that are circulating in comparison to the amount of uncommon sats that's circulating. When we do the math behind this to find the percent of what's that of the, uh, of the actual percent, it works out to be like 0. 0.0000036 or some shit like that. So well under a percent, well under... um. Well under 0.1%, uh, 0.001%, so on and so forth. And that's what I own. That's what I found. Okay, guys? Right? So that is how I break down the uncommon. Only 745,000 of them circulating. And if we want to see what is the percent of that when it comes to the supply, 1.9 quadrillion, it's extremely minute. And who owns it? It's your boy, the crypto lifestyle, baby. Why? Because we live in that crypto lifestyle. We be hustling, we be excavating, we be developing tools to do such things. We are positioning ourselves ahead of the pack. We got, say with me in the live chat, tomorrow's newspapers. Not tomorrow, but today. All right. So that is another gem of gem that we found, an uncommon sat. See what I'm saying?
Any questions? Let me know. I'll answer some questions right now, actually. And then we can move on to some other firm examples. Okay. Question time. I want questions if you got any. I love multi layer NFTs like, um, what's that? Sync Slabs, where you can make money with a passive. Now you're talking. Now you're speaking my language. Those NFTs I would respect, but art NFTs is what I'm talking about here. Like, that doesn't really have much value, right? Their value is this. They're reliant on new community members to come in to buy their NFTs to pump their price. When if you have an NFT project that's backed by a technology that can actually do something valuable and also um, um, a generate revenue that can be distributed, we're talking about value, bro. So thank you for saying that. Um, what's that? Uh, Bussy Match Club. Okay, yeah, Brian says, dang, just realized that the mic is almost as big as you. <laughs> Somebody else was telling me that. This is the old school mics. This mic costs about $7,000. Everything that I fucking wear, use, or have is of up, utmost value. Why? Because that's what I like to carry myself. But this mic here, well, no, it's about 6000 bucks for this. The other one's about 7000 Just the mic alone. The arm is like 1000 bucks. Come on, bro. I take my shit very seriously over here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the mic's as big as your head. Let's, let's test it out. This, this is a big one, but uh, this is the old school radio mics from back in the day. Again, you want to talk about collectibles? Right here. Okay, what do we got? Uh, trust you're doing well, Big Kama says. Okay, so let me move down a little bit further here. What's the name of the collection, of this collection? Well, I am just showing, I would love to get um, some, some, some pointers from you guys. Would you guys like to direct me? Like, so what should I make the Bitcoin having, you know, representation? And when I say representation, I mean, what should the art be with the, for this artifact? Right, of Bitcoin having. What should the art be for Satoshi's last saying? On the date I inscribed that Satoshi, the same day he said that. I was thinking of something where I see Satoshi sitting on his computer like this. The picture could be from the back, showing his laptop, and he's saying there's more work that needs to be done. And then he has his hood on, and he's looking a little bit worried. You know what I mean? And you can see the reflection of his face through the mirror in the, in the art from this side, right? I'll be pretty cool of what he's saying. And he's just like kind of concerned. He's like, he's like, he's like, it's kind of like my thumbnails that I make, little stupid faces I make. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'll do something like that. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear from you guys. What do you think that uh, that that representation should be? Okay, so now we got. I got a bunch of old dates. Awesome. But let me ask you another question, um, H. Do you got the tool to inscribe those old dates? Because that's just half of it, right? Like, and that's a that's a big half. First of all. Um, the ability to do that. And there's ways you could do that on, on ordinals.com, but it involves a bit more steps than what I have um, developed here, okay? And this took us about about a month and a bit, about a month and two weeks, give or take, to create it, um, you know? And, and by the way, this tool was invented um, to be used for myself and my team, right, privately. We're also currently developing um, the, the 2.0 product that's going to be publicly available um, to anybody who wants to use it, um, you know. So, And there's perks involved for um, a certain group of people as well, which we'll get to, all right. Um, so let's carry on. Cool. I will move on to... Uh, let's go on here. So, look at this. Come on, guys. You want to talk about cultural events? We're talking about it right here, okay? We're talking about cultural events right here, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. This is one of the most known ever Bitcoin things, HODL. What did it derive from? Right here. A guy, was this? Bitcoin Talk, I believe. Yeah, Bitcoin Forum. I am HODLing December 18th, 2013. Now, we all know what happened with that. That cultural event took on a life of its own. And still today, 10 years later... Literally 10 years later, we all see in Telegram chats hodling, hodl, hodl. Well, what happened if I was to make just an NFT project on this with nothing relevant towards it? Or what if I was to make an ordinal collection based off of this hodl and I have the Satoshi to put that ordinal from that date of December 18th? Well, need, need not to fear because I excavated that exact freaking Satoshi. 2013. Um, December 18th. Let's go back. 2013, December 18th. I am hodling. I have the hodl ordinal collection, and I got the Satoshi to back it up with. This is what we're talking about. Could you back up your, your project with true artifacts? I doubt that. I doubt you can. Okay? 
come on. You, are you are you sitting there right now telling me this is not a massive cultural event in Bitcoin's history? <laughs> it's not even my opinion. It's the consensus, bro. I, again, I study what game that I'm fucking playing, and then I find out the best way to win. I know how do you do that? You outwork others. You bring more value than others. You seek value before others, and then you come to market and you show the world what the heck is going on in this head. Come on, man. Come on, bro. Put some respect on my name and my team's name, bro. This is what we be doing, man. We like to, you know, we 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 were just pissed off that there's just a bunch of shit in the market, you know. We're just pissed off that there's just a bunch of crap in the market. And the unfortunate thing is this, you know, if you could convince, you know, the world to go buy Mexican pesos, and if the world or the major a large sum of them, the majority of them goes and buy it, guess what's going to happen? Well, the fucking pesos is going to be more valuable than the fucking British pound. Why? Because you convince a large sum of people to go buy that. The same is true with like these useless NFTs out there. If you can convince the rest of the world to do it, and everybody does it, and does it, and does it, and does it, yeah, they're going to go up. But over time, we're going to see what happens to those NFTs. And right now, time is telling us a lot, okay? They're not true artifacts, okay? This is. Come on. Like, I would love to debate anybody on this. I am hodling. You're, for the person who, who would like to debate, I guarantee you, you use that word hodl how many times in your life if you're in Bitcoin and crypto. And if you're using that term, that means that how you were influenced by that cultural event. And to tell me that how me making a, a ordinal collection about HODL because I own the Satoshi mine on that date isn't relevant, you are smoking crack. That's what I got to tell you. Moving on. So this one is pretty cool too. Okay, this is from Satoshi Nakamoto himself. This isn't my words. This is Satoshi Nakamoto himself, broskies. Come on. Let's carry on. My coffee's getting cold. On February 26, 2010, Satoshi Nakamoto said, Good suggestion. I made the B slightly lighter and the background slightly darker. Very slightly. The foreground is now exactly the same color as the BC in the old one. Bruh, it does not get much more fucking relevant than this. We're talking about Satoshi Nakamoto, the guy who made fucking Bitcoin. And in Bitcoins, there are Satoshis. We're talking about Bitcoin ordinals. Bitcoin ordinals are derived from Satoshis. And now we're talking about the art, the old Bitcoin fucking logo with the BC in it that Satoshi is talking about right here that he wants to change. Broski, if I inscribe this Satoshi right here, February 26, 2010, as you can see right here, February 26, 2010, of like, say, Satoshi Nakamoto, like, he's on, like, a canvas. The canvas is standing up on it, so, like, you know, the stand. Got a piece of paper, and we got this right here, old local, like, almost done, and then he got his paintbrush, and he's like this with his paintbrush, and he's thinking, and he's changing some fucking orange, like what he's saying here, like what he's saying here, how the heck is not, that's not fucking collectible, bro? How is that not collectible? Like, based off all the garbage you guys be buying, bro? You're gonna tell me this is not collectible? Why? Because what is the meaning of collectible? Right, cultural artifacts, whether ancient or current, have significance because they offer an insight into technological processes, economic development, and cultural. And there was a better freaking um, meaning here, I'm pretty sure, that I had open, right, in, in these little things here, right? Um, here we go. That artifacts provide us a way into history, objects, and their tangibility. Provide a variety of stakeholders with an opportunity, blah, 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 blah. And the beautiful thing about this is what, ladies and gentlemen? Your ass could do this on your own. Your ass could do this. This is not unique to me. We're all under the same circumstances. You can find your own gems too that I could never probably find because I don't have them in my wallet, is my point. Holy crap, bro. Okay. What else do we got up in this house? Okay. You know, but I'm pretty sure you guys are getting the point here. Okay, so what is this? Okay, that's the last one. Let's talk about... <laughs> How can I forget this? How can I ever forget this? I should, sorry. My bad. How can I forget this? What's more monumental than the birth of Bitcoin itself? Bitcoin anniversary. 
January 3rd, 2009, okay? First of all, you'll never, ever be able to get this, Satoshi, because the first block, I believe, which was right here, obviously, you know, this is when Bitcoin launched, um, Satoshi Nakamoto himself owns this. So you can only get Bitcoin's anniversary in 2010, 11, 12, so on and so forth, up till now. You can't tell me that is not relevant. Like, like January 3rd, 2009, or January 3rd, 2010, 11, 12, January 3rd, 2014, 13, is not relevant. That is the birth of Bitcoin. Okay, that saved many people's lives financially. Okay, <laughs> okay, you tell me that's not relevant, bro. Well, how about if you own a Satoshi that was actually on the third, like I do? 2011, the first of the third. Or what about if you hold another Satoshi like I do, the very next year, 2012, January 3rd, which correlates exactly with the date of Bitcoin being born. You tell me that's not a relevant ordinal collection to make for a connoisseur? Sure, I would love to have you know, all of them, but that's going to take some time. And if you could create a product that doesn't involve much time or effort or energy or technology needed to find these things that are valuable, guess what? You are in a fucking Ponzi. You are in a hot air balloon and there's a hole in it and they're trying to patch up that fucking hole so it doesn't crash. Okay? That's what you're in. Things that are valuable, value is linked with difficulty. It's linked with time spent. It's linked with exerting energy. And it's also linked with technology. Cr using a tool. I should say it's linked with the tools. Right? Whether that's physical tools or software tools. To find these things. You're not used to this shit. Because you guys be buying fucking colorful monkeys. And apes. And fucking giraffes perhaps. I don't know. But y'all don't know about this stuff. But luckily, you're subscribed to the Smart Money channel. Straight up. That's all I got for y'all. What you guys got for me? Let me know in the live chat. Um, yeah, what do you guys got for me? I got some questions right now. Let's do it. I'll take some questions. So we have, okay. We got, where are we, Davis? Let me go down here. <laughs> this guy saying get on with the information that's fine that's fine okay 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 no problem so i think i did that so i get it but many want um it's like having a special no plate no number let me see number one collectible card um okay you can elaborate a bit more elaborate a bit more that's fine i'm i'm open to i'm open to any sort of like um critique i guarantee you i blow you out the water i guarantee you i blow you out the water in a respectful way so let's talk about it Okay, so let me go back to what he was saying here. There's IX, and I'm open to this. Let's talk about it. Why not? Um, where is his initial message? Okay, right here. It's obvious. No, uh, first sat mine after having. Okay, so that's the uncommon. I get it, but many won't. Um, if you get it, I think many people would. I think I have a little bit more faith into people's uh, smarts than maybe you do. All right, if you get it, why shouldn't they get it? Okay, maybe you're a smart guy, but I'm sure there's other smart people out there or sensible out there that would get it. It's not, again, it's not even my opinion. Look at the definition of what an artifact is. Look at the definition of what a collectible is. <laughs> like, bro, look at the Satoshi. It has a timestamp. Like, Dude, <laughs> it's self-explanatory. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, um, I got a bunch of old dates. The old dates is okay, but to really make them that much more, you know, Valuable and just, okay, I got an old date. Was there something that happened on that date that stands out that you could represent in the form of the symbol, right? Which is the picture. That's what we're talking about. Um, Trevor Shore, yeah, he bought it for, yeah, 1.2 BTC, yeah. I guarantee you, if any one of us here asked Trevor, who, who you know, who bought the magazine, the ordinal, if that Satoshi that represents the ordinal of the magazine was on that date, he would tell you, of course I would. Of course it will be much more valuable to me, you know? Okay, so Thomas says around 144 blocks per day, only 144 common, uncommon sats per day. So that's now we're going off of the other side of things, right? We're not talking about the cultural events, but we're talking about the mathematical difficulty of actually having one of those Satoshis in your wallets. Okay? Pissed I didn't buy Bitcoin when someone told me about it in $200 at the time. I got into Bitcoin at $900 um, in early, well, early summer of 2017. Um, Crypto Badger, awesome work, Francis. I must have missed it, but how can we verify if the sats that we have are uncommon or not common? Um, so yeah, so basically what you could do is if you could find your Satoshi serial number, you come on over there to Ordinal's wallet and you can actually type in those things. 
to find out the serial number, okay? Now, if you have devised and created a tool that has a very user-friendly UI like I have, then it's just a few clicks and you can get that information and a couple steps. And you will also be opening this up to um, a select few people. Um, I've been getting a lot of people DMing me, commenting on Twitter and even on the videos, asking how they could scan, but that's just half of it. But you need to know how to inscribe. And doing it manually, you, you could only just like, after some time, you'll be able to see what you got, but you won't be able to inscribe it. See what I'm saying? So we're going to be rolling that out too for you guys as well to check out. Oh, yeah. So, sorry. Buddy says, 500k view says, okay, okay, relax on screen. My bad, my bad. I think the mic was a little bit too close, but uh, that's what happens when I, you know, tap into value and I get excited. So Lucas says, sub Francis, where's the info? When, 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 when be? So you guys want some more shit? You guys want some more shit to drop on you today? I don't think you'll be able to handle this information because I've already dropped a bomb here on you guys, right? Again, please, anybody. Good, bad, or in between. Are you seeking the, uh, the... Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Are you understanding this? And do you understand why this is valuable? Please. And if you don't, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. But I want you guys to really understand why this is valuable, right? If you don't, please speak out. Even if you are a critique, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, I'll turn... Just like me, bro. Dude, again, I am the last person who want to get into fucking NFTs, Okay. And this is why I didn't. This is why I was trying. Again, it goes back to what I said, and I mean this when I say this. Myself and my team, we thought there's a lot of shit in the entire landscape of the NFT space. So what did we do? We made our business license NFT. We are creating a business in the metaverse, okay? Right? That has a revenue stream that actually took fucking seven months to build. NFT pictures, snap of fingers, there's one. Right? That's all they need to do. They, 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 do, they go to like Fiverr, get some guy to make them a couple copies and then do a generator that mixes it all up and they put it out there. Effortless. It has no, no time behind it, no labor, no technology, nothing. Okay? But for us, it took seven months to build that world, that 3D environment that we're going to have businesses. Right? Now, we're seeing the ordinal space sadly getting caught up into that same, you know, direction of uh, the um, Ethereum NFTs. So what do I have to do? I got to come to market and show people what value really is. Because you guys don't know. Most people don't know what value is. Value takes time. It has to be backed by something, okay? Whether that's utility or technology or both. And if you could add a revenue stream to that, buddy, sign me up. Okay, what else we got here? What else we got here? Let me talk to my team for a second here. Maybe I might drop some, some more news on y'all. I might drop some more news on y'all right now. One second.
Sorry, sorry. My, yeah, sorry. My mic was off. Sorry, sorry, my bad, my bad. So let me start from the top, right? The, the one minute that I was talking there, my mic was off. So basically, thank you guys for um, staying here. And as you guys know me, I am a visionary in this space, okay? And, uh, you know, when I saw Ordinals come to market, it was very fascinating to me, right? This, you guys know, if you've been following me, you know I wasn't into the Ethereum NFTs. I didn't see the value in it. But why Ordinals really stood out to me is because it's actually part of Bitcoin's network. It's a Satoshi, right? Sorry. You guys still don't hear me? You guys must hear me now. Just confirm, please. Shouldn't be muted anymore. Test, test, test. Sorry, guys, one sec. Just confirm in the chat if we're still muted or not. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. We should not be muted anymore. Please confirm if we are or not. You hear me, right? Thank you. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. So basically, you guys know me for the most part, right? I am a visionary in this space, and I didn't want to, when I saw the Bitcoin ordinals coming to market, it, extru it really fascinated me, like genuinely and fascinated me because I understood it. This is governed by the world's most decentralized network, which is Bitcoin, right? When I look at the other NFTs, they're not. There's no royalties in this, like, like unlike Ethereum, nothing like that. It's fully decentralized in the sense of the art cannot be changed with metadata. All of these things really fascinated me. Um, to know that how it's actually a part of the Bitcoin's network, each one of these art, unlike NFTs, which is a newly minted token that is not even part of Ethereum. To see it's governed by that, it's actually governed by someone's smart contract. It really fascinated me. And when I dig deeper into this market, I've also realized that how it's not even so much about the art and community driven, like when most people were led to believe with previous um, Ethereum projects, it's actually driven by the history, like as I showed you guys in this presentation, right? And obviously, as each day went by over the course of the last three months, what I saw was I noticed that how, you know, the value is being lost there because the inscription number keeps on rising, right? And anything over a million, as I showed you guys right here, is not going to be as worth as much as those ones under a million. So what I told my team was, guys, I said, guys, we need to dig deeper here and we need to see where is the market going to be, the ordinal market, when it's over a million. And I told them, I said, it's going to come down to the actual Satoshi. I said, whoever comes up with this project first and goes to market and explains it in a you know well-explained manner to people, right? That community and that idea is going to blow up. Because there's nothing else out there right now that's making sense, okay? So I want to introduce to you guys a project that I am going to be um, conducting here, right, in Bitcoin Ordinals. It's called Sats Hunters, okay? Sats Hunters are the people or the community or my team and myself who are excavating through Satoshis, as I just showed you guys here. And we are inscribing valuable Satoshis to, uh, to specific dates, okay? And there's a lot of different benefits with this, what we're doing. We're going to be allowing our ordinal community members of Sats Hunters, okay, to use this software for free, okay? We're actually going to be charging the public a fee, okay? But uh, and there's a revenue model behind this as well. Guys, is the website up right now? I'll just show them the damn website. And by the way, to let you guys know why this is actually um, well thought out. And I did just, dude, I could have come like at about 150K um, inscriptions. But no, I'm not rushing this, bro. I'm not rushing this. Our ordinals are actually ranked at um, 300K to about 355K. Okay? Inscriptions right now are well over 1 million. Okay, let me just see one thing here. Also... What we could do is, we got the Discord as well. If you want, you could actually, um, what you call it? You could also give them the link to the Discord, okay, guys? So basically, this is how it's going to work, okay? So right now, this instrument here, and a lot of people, have, I know you guys want to actually use it to inscribe your own stuff. I get it, I get it. Right now, this um, software, revolutionary software that we have created that took about a month and a half, allows it to be done. You guys are going to need our corporation for those who actually come into our ordinal community, um, and we will scan your wallet for you. We'll inscribe any Satoshi that you want, okay? When we go to market with this tool, okay, 
and you guys are going to see it as well. Um, when we come to market with this tool, um, we're going to be charging a fee to the public. Very similar to how Unisat.io charges um, a fee for their inscription tool. Very similar to how Gamma.io charges a fee for their inscription tool. We are going to be giving 25% of those um, fees to a certain amount of people who are holding a certain amount of ordinals, okay? And the, 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 the um, you know, the specifics are, is going to be compiled real soon. If we could get the website here, we do have it on uh, coming soon, as you can see right here, okay? So it's satshunters.com, okay, guys? So right now, it goes back to what I was telling y'all, okay? This is not like, this is not like the fiat fucking industry where it's backed off of broken promises, Okay? The president's broken promises. This is something that is backed by technology. We have a unique inscription tool that can inscribe and scan any wallet, okay, and inscribe any Satoshi that you own in that wallet. Very powerful. So this ordinal project is backed by technology. The utility behind it now is we are allowing our ordinal members free access of this tool. Right now, our ordinal members will have to work with us. We will tell them exactly what to do, how to do it. Here's the tool. We're going to inscribe it for you, okay? So that's the other benefit. The third benefit is, depending on, I think we're going to go with three ordinals. If you hold three ordinals, you're going to also be getting a revenue share from our, our, our product when it goes live to the, um, to the public. Um, you know, you're going to get, I believe it was 20 to 25%. Uh, the number is firm on the website. 25 to 25% of that if you hold three ordinals, Okay. If you don't, if let's just say you have one ordinal, you get the free access, but we also will be doing this. Let's just say that Uncommon Sat, and I have an Uncommon Sat. I actually even put that into that uh, collection as part of it in terms of the revenue share, okay? The, there's two revenue share. The first one, let's talk about the first one. For example, my Uncommon Sat, okay? I make an art of it, I inscribe it, I go to Scarce City, we sell it for auction or wherever, or, or swap, whatever it is, and... 25% of that will go to 20 lucky winners of our ordinal collection in terms of revenue share. Uncommon, as you guys just saw, 0.000000036% chance of owning one, okay? We will give 25% to a random top 20 ordinal holders of Sats Hunters, number one. Number two, okay, if you own three ordinals or more, we're going to be giving you another revenue stream, okay, which is going to be guaranteed revenue in terms of if you have three. Remember, the first one is not guaranteed. That will be by lottery. Okay, the top 20. Every time we sell, every time we sell an ordinal, a rare sat, whatever it is, we're giving you guys 25%, random 20 people. Okay, the other one is when we go to market to the public, every time the public uses our service, imagine if you are a Gamma.io ordinal member. Let's just say they had one, okay, and they were giving you a piece of that cut every time. That's what we're giving to our, um, you know, um, ordinal holders who have three or more ordinals, okay? Um... And uh, we're also going to be uh, compiling a BRC20 token to it as well, okay? And those, obviously, right now, the future of BRC20 in terms of use case isn't, um, you know, isn't really, isn't really live. Actually, guys, listen, the website, you know, once you press the publish button, it's going to take some time to actually populate. So, it's okay. We'll, uh, we can present this. This is, this is what we can present to you guys in our next um, live stream or video, whatever it is, okay? This is the announcement. Um, you know, well, you, you can drop the, the Discord chat if you want in, in the live chat, and we'll keep that there for now. Have an open set of word about this to anybody. Um, we haven't, um, <laughs> you know, marketed this or nothing. Literally, I wasn't even going to talk about it in this live stream. I just wanted to talk to you guys and show you guys what we have developed and what we have found, right? See what I'm saying? So we got real use cases, we got a revenue stream, and we got technology back in this project. And we are led to believe, we are convinced the ordinal market is most certainly heading in this direction. Do you want to be on the right side of history or the wrong side? Again, we are giving our members access to do this on their own with our assistance, you know, right now. With our assistance, we're going to we're gonna guide you guys through this, you know, step by step. Join our Discord chat and, um, you know, let's see, let's scan your wallets and let's see what you got. But again, you have to be a Sats Hunters ordinal member to get access to this tool. All right, guys? Any questions? I can take some questions and then, um, I don't know. Maybe Davis will be able to deploy the website. I don't know. I think it'll take some time. But uh, let's carry on. What questions do you, do you guys got? Okay. No, talking about that stuff. Sorry, no sound. Okay. Yes, you're good. Sounds good now. Cool. Okay. All right. Okay, so there's a Discord chat. So yeah, 
So th that's fine. That's fine. So that's the announcement. That's what we're doing right now. Okay. Join the Discord. We could ask, you know, you guys could answer, ask more questions. We'll answer them there. And my next video, we're going to actually be talking about what Sats Hunters is and showing you guys the website and all those things. Again, I didn't plan to, to, to um, present that today. Um, I just wanted to show you guys other things, but we'll be doing that. Join the Discord chat. You don't want to miss out on this. Um, we might be partnering with other, you know, larger, you know, like a Magic Eden or Ort Swap. We didn't contact them as yet, but, you know, we might go there, you know, to launch this as well. But we're very happy with what we got. It's inspired by Indiana Jones. Why? Because Indiana Jones is an archaeologist, and the line of work that we're going to be conducting is excavating um, Satoshis. So we are literally becoming archaeologists. Okay, guys, it's pretty cool. Um, so more information on that. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section and in the live chat. Join the Discord chat. We didn't go to market as yet, but we will. There's not a lot of them. Um, and and we, we, we chose a right... There's 1,138, and we chose that for a reason. It's a symbolic meaning, so let me uh, show you guys that right here. Okay, so this right here... This number, sorry. Okay. So this number right here, 1138, actually was inscribed. This number was inscribed. Um, I believe it was in a Star Wars, and Indiana Jones all um uses it as well. And it pretty much means, I don't know if they got the meaning here, but... Indiana Jones, let's see here. It, it pretty much means new opportunities and don't be afraid to try new things, is what 1138 means. So that's what we went with. That's the total amount of ordinals. And Indiana Jones is pretty much our guy. Um, because why? I already explained to you. We're doing Bitcoin archaeology just like Indiana Jones. We find some real fucking gems. And we got technology back. We got utility back. We got a revenue stream backed. You ain't going to find that shit anywhere else. And we are led to believe the ordinal market is going to go into the rare sats industry and the cultural events. And I wanted to present that to y'all. More information in the next live stream. Let me know what y'all think. And until then, you're on your own. Later.